What's up guys, Steven here from techmaker.tv. In this video, we're kicking off a new series where we're going to build a Grubhub clone from scratch. One thing I want to accomplish with this series is to teach you how to go through any app or website or product on the web that you use and show you how to reverse engineer it. So this series will be good for you if you've been learning to code for just a little bit and you're not quite sure how everything fits together completely and um, you want to actually understand how the web works a little bit better and how you can sort of design and build your own products from the ground up. All of that being said, this is going to be a pretty long series. So if you want to stay up to date with what we're doing, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Also give the video a thumbs up that helps us reach more people. And one other thing, go over to techmaker.tv, which I'll link, I'll link down in the description. And uh, check out what we're doing over there because um, we're adding some more content uh, over there that you won't find here. All of that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So part one of this series, what we're going to do is actually go through the Grubhub website. And we're going to map out what are all of the objects that we can find. And then in part two, what we're going to do is establish what are all of the relationships between those objects. And then from there, we'll actually start building this out in a Ruby on Rails application. So this isn't going to be a typical episode for me. It's a little bit uh, outside my personal comfort zone, so don't judge me too hard, but uh, we'll get through it. This isn't going to be coding. This is going to be essentially, I'm going to live or uh, screencast my research that I'm doing here. So I'm actually doing this with you. I haven't pre-done this, so we're going to figure this out together. But what we're going to do, I want you to grab a pen and paper and we are going to go through the user experience of Grubhub and we are going to document all of the objects that we see. And like I said, in the next part, we will actually figure out how they all fit together. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to try to focus on things that I would consider kind of core products. Like there may be some sort of special features we might ignore, but let's just kind of get going here. Um, so right off the bat, the first thing I notice is this sign in button up here, which means you have a user account that you can set up, right? So let's write down that we have a user object. Okay. Then down here we have a, and I will sign in in a minute and we'll get going with that. But down here we have this order food, blah, blah, blah. And then we get a zip code box. So I'll put my zip code here for Chicago click find food so right off the bat the first thing that we see up here at the top is a list of categories so we can go ahead and write down category that's another type of object that we can have and again I know I keep repeating myself but we're gonna figure out how all of these things fit together in the next episode um, here we have a list of restaurants showing up so we've got uh, looks like there's I've got this open now filter on so it looks like our options are a little limited right now um, but anyway so we've got um, McDonald's, Smoky Bones, Taco Bell, Hagen dazs if you're in the mood for ice cream whatever um, so we have a list of restaurants so we know that we have a restaurant object I never managed to spell restaurant correctly the first time for some reason um, even though it's written right in front of me here on my screen. Um, so one thing you'll notice is oftentimes you'll have a list of objects and then if you click on it, you will have just that one object. So this correlates to, um, like in Rails, for example, we'll have an index action in our controller, which will be a list of objects. And then when you click on something, you'll have the show action. And you can see that represented up here in the uh, URL. So we have a restaurant slash and then specific. And then up here, you know, they don't have this set up exactly like a typical Rails app because you have a search and then you have all these search query terms and so on and so forth. But ultimately, this is, this is an index page for restaurants. So we have restaurant objects. Um, we also have this thing here for offers which looks like you know they're showing you essentially restaurants that have discounts currently running or something like that so we can add an object for offer so we'll write down offer so right now my list is user category restaurant and offer so with our 
with each of our objects, you know, they, they're going to have attributes. And so you can tell because I search for my zip code and it's giving me a list of restaurants that are close to me. So that's implying that there is some sort of location awareness. So let's click into one of these restaurants. Let's go over here and look at Smoky Bones and let's get a sense of what the attributes are. So we're gonna write down, and we, listen, in this first pass, we might not get everything inside of Grubhub. It's a big application, um, but we'll get a good chunk of it, enough for us to kind of build out something interesting. Um, and you can always come back and kind of add more, but I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, a restaurant has a name. So I'm kind of writing this in another area on my sheet. You'll have to kind of work out what this looks like for you. But so the restaurant object has an attribute of name, in this case, Smoky Bones, the address. Um, now we may split that up and say like address line one, two, so on and so forth. There's a phone number. Um, let's see. That's kind of all I know. Okay, so down here, uh, there's a price so the price range might be an attribute so I'm gonna write down price range okay so there's a lot of new objects on this page so let's take a look at this so right here off the bat so we have this menu item right it's like that's an object we have this so the the restaurant is like this is the show page as I was talking about so we're looking at this restaurant but it also has a list of menu items and those menu items are categorized. So that tells me that we have menu item as an object and then we also have menu item category. And you can see that because they're split up, right? So, sorry, I'm pausing slightly because I'm writing things down here, but like you know, you have a menu item category of salad, and then you have, you know, these two items, Caesar salad and wedge salad. So, and again, we need to take note of the attributes here. So the menu item category is going to have a name or title, you know, we can, we can choose later. Um, then, let's see here. The, the menu item itself has a price. So I'm writing down sort of in the area of the object, I'm writing down price, I'm writing down name, and I'm writing down, uh, we won't actually do image uploads in this probably, or we might, I don't know. There's an image, essentially. Um, we can choose how we implement that later, but there's an image. So we have price, image, name, and we have a description. Okay, let's see here. And then down here, we also have one thing we haven't talked about is, is well, um, the restaurant has hours, right? So I'm not sure if, so we can, that might be an attribute or that might be, um, it's most likely not an attribute, that's most likely its own object. So it's like, uh, what should we call that? Uh, time, we'll call it like time open for now, or I don't know, I gotta figure that out. But we have some object here for the time that it's open. And it has to be able to know like what days you know, so like today it opened from this time to this time, but it needs to have some sort of sense of a schedule in the back end. Okay, so we are getting a good amount of objects here. One thing we haven't talked about is the ratings, right? So we need an object for rating. And then, okay, so there's also an about here. So, okay, that's what we already looked at. Um, we have rating and then we have review. And review has, so rating has essentially a number of stars as an attribute. We might call it number of stars, we might call it something else. Then review has, um, I guess we can just call it like content. 
And then, you know, you can see here that they have their order connected to it. There's also timestamps. So some of this will be generated uh, with, you know, the database automatically with Rails. So that's, we won't worry about documenting. Um, you can see here there's a particular user who posted this rating, and that's what we're going to talk about in the next episode where we sort of join together all of these different objects and map out the relationships. So one thing I noticed is that actually these reviews have a star rating. And so what might make sense is actually to just have a single object called review and then have star rating be an attribute on it. Um, so that's something to think about um, and how that would work, but we can come back to that. Uh, but just make a note that that may go down like that. Um, the other thing we can actually just go ahead and infer down here is that you can see here like Richard ordered and it shows that, you know, the items that he ordered. So we have an order object. So um, we can go ahead and just get that idea from here. So right now I have the following objects written down. I have user, which we didn't really look at and I won't go into that right now, um, but we will actually add that on our side. Um, so the user, we'll just keep it simple and have an email and password login. Um, so we'll have those attributes, but don't worry about that. Then we have category and category probably just has a name attribute or something like that. We can kind of think about that later. I think if I'm not mistaken, there's an image associated with it. So uh, let's look at that actually really quick. So, or so we have category and then we'll say name and image. Okay, so user, category, then we have restaurant, which um, has name, address, phone, price range, then we have offers, which are these discount things down here. Um, we have menu item, which again we can see if we click into a particular restaurant. Um, then the menu item has a price, a name, a photo or image, and a description. Um, McDonald's doesn't actually have descriptions on theirs. Interesting. Um, uh, Smoky Bones does have some descriptions down here. Um, then we have menu item category, which is this. Then we have the rating slash review system that we talked about, and then we have order. Then one thing that I missed is the time open, or whatever we were going to call this, schedule. Maybe schedule is better. Uh, schedule. I, I don't know. I got to think about that. There's like schedule slot. That's a I don't know why I'm struggling to name this thing, but whatever. Um, we will find a name for it in the next episode probably. There's one thing in here that we can't see and that we won't be able to see, which is the restaurant has to be able to actually have some sort of way to administer this page essentially. So they've got to be able to log in and upload their menu, um, set prices, change prices, set up discounts and all this kind of stuff. I think that that wouldn't necessarily give us new objects. Um, we can probably build this out with the objects we've listed. But it's just an interesting thing to point out that you have to remember like somebody's got to actually be able to set this up. What that does probably mean is that the restaurant has to have a login capability. So we'll have to build that out one way or, or another. Um, so we'll have to take that into account when we look at our relationships. And that's going to be a little bit tricky because that means you have to have different types of users probably or something like that. In actual fact, there's at least one other type of user too, which is the person doing the delivery. So that's another person who has to have the ability to see your order. And once they drop it off, they have to be able to mark it as delivered or something to that effect. So that's basically it for this episode. I will say there is no way in the world that we managed to get all of the objects that Grubhub has um, in this quick little video here. I don't know. I think we may have like 10 objects. I assume, I've never seen their code base or anything like that, but I assume that Grubhub probably has hundreds of objects or at least dozens of objects, probably hundreds. And... Um, 
you know, so their code base is going to be a lot more thorough than anything that we're going to put together in a quick YouTube series, um, no matter how long it is, because they have a whole team of people working on it all the time. Um, but anyway, so, you know, this will help you um, kind of start to wrap your head around when you look at products on the web, how you can actually extract at least part of, you know, what makes it work the way that it does. So in the next episode, what we're going to do is actually sort of draw a map of how what the objects we have so far fit together, how they fit together, um, and then we will start building out features based on those objects. And, you know, we will likely run into situations where, oh, we missed something or something like that. And then we'll just come back and repeat this process. That's the great thing about kind of doing these clones is you can kind of come in here and go, okay, well, I can't make this feature work. What did I miss? So we'll probably have to do that, uh, most likely. So at any rate, um, that's it for this episode. It's a little bit different than typical, so um, be kind with the like button. But um, anyway, I will talk to you in the next episode.